All right, uh, who's ready to talk about knitting? Yeah? Well, I hope you're in, uh, ready for math, though, because I am going to talk about math. Um, hi, that's my name, that's my Twitter. Um, I'm an engineer at the Park Lane, and I like to make things. And one of many things that I do is a knitting in JavaScript. So I like knitting, needles to say. And I started knitting maybe like I was seven, and it was like something that I've always done, like once a year, come winter, I make like a little project, like make scarf or mitten, but nothing crazy, nothing like, you know, having an Etsy store or something. And one winter, I was learning JavaScript because it was cold winter, polar buttocks was there, I had nothing to do, of course you learn JavaScript. And of course it was winter, so I did the knitting too. So my, one of my first projects that I did with JavaScript was a simple counter that helped me keep track of how many rows that I knit. And that was just JavaScript, jQuery, manipulating a DOM. Um, things and I was like, this is kind of interesting. That was like the one moment that clicked that I can use computer programming to do things that I already do and do it better. And surprisingly, JavaScript became my job and accelerated this process. And now I'm all about just automating everything. I want to build dev tools for knitting. And <laughs> find out that it was all about math. And I wasn't a math major, so I was kind of like, OK. So the title was a Needle in the Tech Stack, which Jet Schmidt gave me. But it, looked, it sounds like a tech person talking about, here's how to do cleft. In fact, it is really just like, oh, no. Um, OK, we can do this. So how a cleft will accidentally stumble on the math. Or it's more like, you say, if you say, this shouldn't be that hard, it's actually hard. <laughs> so warning, as I said, it's going to be math. Uh, there's going to be magic called bitwise operator. <laughs> so prepare yourself. Um, I created a beautiful data visualization. Good segue, right? Um, scatter plot of things. So the um, green circle indicates there's going to be math. And, uh, <laughs> Radius of the circle is a how many scoops of ice cream that I serve myself after I figure that out. <laughs> and the red dot indicates that I have some funny GIF on it. So you get rewarded after math. See? See? Data visualization, informative. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna make a CSS joke. I load this slide because I wanted to do this data visualization. And this is a float of the CSS div that is switching the view. So now that this is not working, you're going to see a little by little the next slide. But we're going we're gonna to deal with this. So let's talk about knitting. When you talk about knitting, um, you might think like this. And you already get the peak of that part. <laughs> um, it's kind of intimidating. It's kind of like you don't know what to do. But we all programmers experience this when you first encounter your terminal and you have not, no idea what it is, and the letters and numbers are frying, and you have like a mini heart attack, and like, um, is my laptop being hacked? <laughs> so like, but we all know that once you've done it, and once you understand it, you know that that is not that hard. You can actually understand what it is. So let's understand what knitting is, and it's very simple. There's a two things that you need to know. Knit stitch and purl stitch. Knit stitch, you pull the yarn from the back of the needle. Purl stitch, you push the yarn from a front of the needle. And it creates a two distinct pattern in the, uh, the, the face of the fabric. And combination of these two are most of the patterns that you get in your uh, sweater. So here is a, a half of uh, ribbing that you got. <laughs> Usually, this is two by two, 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 by two ribbing which you usually see it on the uh, cuff or the neckline of the sweater, which is basically two knit stitch, two pearl stitch repeating each other. And then that's the pattern that I took from my sweater, which is making a diagonal line. But in fact, it is just knit and pearl stitch that is shifting towards the left. Um, Will, do you think if I reload this, is this too risky? <laughs> because it's going to be not make sense. Um, 
There you go. Yay! Technology! <laughs> okay, so the kneading pattern to make that comes with like this instruction. Take a moment and who thinks this looks like a code? So I was looking at this and I was like, this seems like the same letter repeating, like maybe valuable, and there's like more explicit uh, repeat terms so of maybe it's a loop. So I actually made a JavaScript code that's like 30 lines of code that interpreted this one. And my first project when I submitted a talk was like transpiler for needing code and the JavaScript, so like a coffee script, but like you see what's coming before you actually need it. So here is like my output of like a scarf pattern and you know making a triangular shape. So it's scarf, so that makes sense. And I actually have the scarf that I knitted here. It turned out, it didn't turn out um, triangular, it turned out like arc. And here's the five um, stitches that I started with, maybe two inch width, and then I knit it down. So if I hold it like this, you might see that there is a triangle. But at the end, it became an arc. And I was like, why? Where's the bug? This was only 30 lines of code. I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and turned out, I was stumbling upon this math thing called hyperbolic geometry. And in knitting term, we call it luffle. <laughs> so there is a three, three geometry, I think. So I heard. As one, uh, they use like two straight line as example. So like Euclidean geometry, you have a two straight line, and one, there is a one line that will never meet a baseline. And spherical geometry is a sphere, so it is a two straight line still, but no matter how you put it together, it always meet each other somewhere. And the hyperbolic geometry is a mathematical theory that there is a straight line, but there is infinite number of line that will never meet the baseline. The, the curvy thing, it's still a straight line. And turned out that this is very hard things to do in computer graphics. But a researcher at Cornell actually did a t research on this, and she, in physical object, modeled this hyperbolic geometry using a knitted fabric. And I didn't know this. I was just researching for like why my code was not working and stumbled upon this whole math and knitting thing. If you're interested, there's like a bunch of researchers doing this. And I was like, this is kind of cool. <laughs> I want to do more of this because this is fun. I thought I hate math, but like this I can deal with. Uh, comes knitting machine. So I wanted to experiment more of the patterns, but I only have like one set of hand. And this, this scarf takes like maybe five solid days, like eight hours a day of like time to do it. So I was like, how can I do this more? And I found out there was a such thing called knitting machine that's standing here. Um, it's a whole bunch of interesting history, and it's you know a lot of things that I can dedicate like an hour to. But one thing that they are good at is it uh, makes a good fabric really fast. And one thing that they do, and a lot of people hack on as an art project, is a thing that the feature that they have called jacquard or pattern knitting. And if you have um, studied textile, you might guess that uh, the jacquard directly come from jacquard loom, which is another machine that creates a textile uh, that's a pattern textile. And the pattern is controlled by punch guard that you see there. So now, this is even more cool, because this punch card system was in a uh, base of the early computer. So I discovered that knitting and JavaScript is cool. I'm going to bring technology to my craft. Turns out that craft was actually fueling the modern technology that we all use now. So it's even more cooler now. I'm like <laughs> so excited. So the way it works is like a dot matrix uh, pointing. Um, those of you who are old enough to remember. Um, so one pixel becomes one stitch. And this is not a pixel out. This is actually a pattern that you put it into the knitting machine. You move the carriage that's sitting there, and it automatically selects which needle to knit a, a contrasting color and a base color. So the, the needle, you can see the dots that's coming front, is picking up yellow in this case. And then the needle that stayed on the back is picking up the white. A lot of people hack on this. Uh, there's a group who made a game, and the reward for you it will be a knitted pattern scarf. 
Um, there is a blame wave and cleaning a pattern for the scarf. Uh, here's a Japanese team who got it out and then they placed it in Arduino, created a G, uh, GUI based on processing. Uh, one person who gets a big mention on this, these projects are Steve Conklin. Years ago, he created an uh, open source Python library that basically um, bridged a computer to that knitting machine. And he open sourced it, and everybody built the uh, project on top of his code. So his code was a terminal-based uh, library that you create a blank file in this knitting machine. Um, you port it over to the computer. Now, this machine was made in the 80s, so it has a serial port uh, connector that thinks that it is talking to the floppy disk drive. So he also created a floppy disk emulator to uh, put it back to your laptop. Now, you do some magic to put the patterns in, and then you put it back, and then you knit, and then you get it. So the file itself looked like this. And I was very intimidated by terminal um, interface, because last thing I want to do when I'm doing my side project and CLAF project is dealing with stuck overflow, figuring out how to use terminal. So I was like, I am going to make a like, cool GUI application with Node and NWJS, because I just learned how to make desktop application, and I'm going to submit a conference talk, and it's going to be awesome. So I started by figuring out what this base file, which is .dat format, which I don't even know what that stands for. Um, leading the, his code, the Python code, to port it to JavaScript and then run it on Node, I stumbled upon this line. And I was like, what is this thing? Like, what? What? I just did the, I, I recently learned Python, and I did like a three tutorials. None of the tutorial mentioned about this operators. <laughs> and I'm like, leading the MDN and you know, trying to figure out, but I was like, what? What's this? And I just like went away. <laughs> Like, I did not deal with Bitwide Operator at this time. So instead, what I did was possibly more difficult way to figure things out. I put a, I made a bunch of different files, the different variation of it, flicked through, and then it was like a puzzle. I was like trying to figure out like what's the pattern and what's changing. So if I change like a pattern size to like 10 by 10 or 20 by 20, what's gonna happen? And this is the worst way to like think about the binary file, but I actually found a pattern. It always a set of 14, and there is a flag that whether there is a pattern or not. I don't know what the heck that is. There are the <laughs> stitches. There's a those, and that's, no, I don't know, but then there's a pattern numbers, and it seems like it was like consistent. So I was like, this is okay, ones and zeros, like once my dad told me that computers are ones and zeros, so like, I can do this. So I was like, yay! So let's put an image into this file, now that I figured out what this file means. So in regular knitting, Thing that you use with the Steve Conklin Python file, you create a bitmap image using a Photoshop or some other tools of your choice. You load the image, grayscale it, and then um, bitmap it, and then load it in. So how do I do this in my JavaScript? Well, I decided to use a GM uh, library, which um, is a, I think, a correct term is a wrapper for graphics magics. Um, I actually tried first tried to do it using a canvas. So I was running a Phantom JS, loading it, the image into the canvas, and using Canvas API to get all of the data. But it was so slow, and uh, it was suggested to me, and then it worked. So one thing that GM does is that once you load the image file, you can output it as a text. So there, they gives you a XY coordinate of a pixel and then the RGB value and a hex value. So I do the handy dandy rejecting of the things and I get a matrix of the color. So now I have an RGB value. Let's grayscale this thing. How do I do this? And then like comes out math. Like I ha like there's like a bunch of things that I don't understand in like Wikipedia and then like I like who decide that these are good user interface to like communicate about what they're doing. <laughs> so I, I somehow got this, and this was the simplest one that I could understand, so I'm using it in my code. You have an RGB value, um, red, green, blue, and you have uh, three different numbers. You highlight the, the highest number out of three, put it, repeat that three times, and then it gets grayscaled. Uh, gray and this, like, and, like, I think this is not the most accurate, but it does the job for a knitting machine. 
So now you have a grayscale image. This is uh, generated by my JavaScript code, and it worked. And you might think that, well, this is black in my photo, so you, know, you can already knit it with two colors. Well, the grayscale image, turns out, is a white and black and then many shades of gray in between. So it's not exactly a two colors. But I only have two colors on my knitting machine, so it has to be a black and white. How do I do that? So my logic first was to split it in half completely, and then half gets a black and half gets a white. Do that. It doesn't look good. It looked like something that came out of like fax machine and doesn't really <laughs> communicate. So I was like, how can I get this image? This was my favorite game as a kid, and this only used the two colors to like represent um, like different um, great visuals for it. And turns out that what I needed to do was things called dithering. Um, it's the, the copied from Wikipedia. It's intentionally applied form of noise. Okay. Um, GM already had a built-in dither method, so I just did dithering there. I mean, it worked, worked better than the one black and white, but still the, the down here is not really translating a well thing. I did more further research, and what I needed to do was older dithering, or what do you call it, half-tone screening for um, a picture for the, the newspapers. So again, I encountered math, and I don't know how to even read that matrix, maybe? But anyway, here's like how I figure that out and it may be incorrect. So you have an image input. Remember, you grayscaled it, so you have like a one number for each pixel now. And you have a noise part of information called the dithering matrix. You overlay it, compare that um, your base image and the dithering matrix number. And if that number is lower than your noise matrix, then it gets white. If it's over, then it gets black. And that creates a bitmap image. And of course, you can turn it into a number matrix with ones and zeros. So now I already have a one and zeros. So you know that file that I was dealing with for the knitting machine, you know, it was a bunch of zeros. I'm just going to copy the, turn, uh, the, the output and then call it a day. Um, so this is like a three different types of noise that you can uh, popularly use, half tone, bayer, and screw. Um, there's like a bunch of like a game community that's trying to figure out their own custom nodes to render better graphics. I ended up doing with uh, a most popular one, the bayer one. Here comes the bit of the later part. And then see, there's going to be a so much math in there. <laughs> Um, so uh, my idea was that like I'm just gonna put ones and zeros and it's gonna be fine. Turned out it's hex. It's like there's like a bunch of F and like E and like three and like I thought I was just replacing a number, but I needed to do something. Well, so the uh, yeah, <laughs> that happened. I, I understood. I understand now that like okay, the number has a thing called the binary, and then that's like eight letters of ones and zeros, and that represents, and that happened. So there was like two bitwise operator that I needed to use for this project. One is left shift, and then one, the other is a bitwise or. So left shift, as I understand, is a guy who push you to the left, but because it is a bitwise operator, he's a magician, so he gets the magic heart. So let's do this. So A equals 1, and then bitwise shift 4. So A is uh, in binary is that. Now, this guy is going to push you four times, and because he is a magician, he turns the number into 16. Like, how could that happen? Like, what? <laughs> bitwise or operator, here's another person who is going to compare ones and zeros, and he always favors one if there is one. And he's also a magician. Uh, so one and four in the binary looks like that. Compare it. So begin with a, your right hand side. One's and one. There's only one, so he gets one. Zero and zero, he gets zero because there's no one. One's and zero, like because there is a one, he gets one, and then do the zero, and he's a magician, so turn them into five. <laughs> so. That was my, you know, again, like black and white LA of matrix that I got, and I needed to do a whole bunch of operations to do this thing, and turning into hex, and all of the things that I do. You know, I have maybe had a cup of coffee, and some <laughs> things, and this is how I got it. And I don't remember any of that how I did it, and I feel like this. 
So this was like done, this code, original code was done in like Sunday night, I think. Um, it works because I tested it on my machine and it works as a, like a fine print of knitting. So it's tested, but I don't know how it's worked underneath. Um, and my time was up. So here I am talking about it. This was like last week. And, you know, I, I started with like, I'm going to have a GUI application, maybe like a robot arm with Johnny 5 is moving carries back and forth and live knitting and all of the great things that I had. You know, like it didn't really happen, but I learned a thing or two. Like I published in PM module, two libraries, you know, in process. Um, did some interesting thing and I hope it was okay to you. Um, so before I call the presentation off, uh, several thank yous are in order. Um, I did not have any reservation about this project. This was not my work project. So I did not try to be smart or try to hide what I don't know. Like if I have a question, I just tweet it out and just like, hey guys, like I'm having trouble. And then many, many people, not only like people who listed here, uh, jumped on and gave me code samples and like encouragement and all of that. So, and many people I met at the conference and meetups. So you should make friends here. It, it makes it better for you. So thank you. Yeah.